Hey guys, this is the TerraMaster F2423 uh, that, uh, that the folks over at TerraMaster sent over. I absolutely love it. It's been up and running for, for more than a week now. Uh, it's not currently running right now. I shut it down uh, because I, I wanted to make a video about it and I did, I actually did. It's, it's over here in my timeline. The problem is, uh, hopefully you can see that, um, that it is 21 minutes long. And unfortunately it just doesn't say what I wanna say about it. Uh, so let's kind of run through the numbers on this thing. Uh, like I said, this is the TerraMaster F2423, and it is a quad-core uh, Intel Acceleron processor inside uh, with 16 gigs of RAM presently. It came with four gigs, actually, uh, this uh, four gigs right there was in it. We're gonna take a look at that here in just a minute. Um, but it currently has 16 gigs of, of RAM in here and uh, two eight terabyte drives. These are uh, these are Seagate computes. These are the Barracuda, Seagate Barracuda computes. These are unfortunately not NAS drives. These are the only matching uh, pair of drives I had in there that would work. So uh, that's what's in there for right now. Um, but if we flip this thing around, uh, you can see that I actually uh, put uh, some stickers on both of my TerraMasters. Uh, I thought, you know, this one's a, a, a skinny one and that was a big old fat one. So I named them Jay and Silent Bob, uh, just cause I, I, like to, I like to have fun like that. So let's, let's, it's not just, it's not just here that's good. So if we flip this thing around, um, here we can see that it has, you know, all of the same stuff that on the back of that, uh, that the, the, the big guy back there has, but, uh, so it's got, you know, it's got the HDMI port, it's got the USB, uh, I think 3.1, uh, version right there, but it also has, uh, two, uh, Ethernet ports, but both of those are two and a half gig rather than just one gig. So, uh, so, so much, much faster there. Of course, two and a half times faster than what I would be able to get on 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 Silent Bob back there. So, uh, I, again, everything back here basically the same. Uh, one fan versus two, uh, what you would expect in a in a unit half the size, or actually less than half the size. I think this thing idles uh, at like 26, 26 watts, or or has a max throughput of 26 watts, uh, even with uh, hard drives going and whatnot. Uh, super, super efficient uh, and, and is just a pleasure uh, to work with. So what I wanna do, uh, now that I've had it up and running for a week and I know that it's good, uh, I wanna take it apart just so I can show you some of the inner workings of it uh, so you know what to expect. Okay, so just four screws on the top or on the back, whatever, and uh, then we can come into here. Of course, I didn't think this through very well. There's a fan connector right there. So I'm gonna pull on the cable. Don't ever pull on the cable, that's bad. Anyway, so we've got that. Uh, of course, in here we can see uh, the back uh, the back plane here that the drives plug into. So I'm gonna pull this up and I'm gonna set that aside. <clears throat> and again, like I said, those are Seagate computes. Uh, unfortunately, that's just what I had. So uh, let's let's turn this thing around here a little bit. Now, this is this is where, where the fun is first. Uh, right here, this uh, this slot right there is a, currently that is an eight gig uh, DDR4 RAM slot that's running at 2666. I think the cast timing or the cast latency on this was like 19, 19, 19, 42 or something. So not super high speed, but but more than enough uh, for, for a NAS device like this. Uh, so I've got eight gigs over here. Uh, in order to get to this, it really, it really was a matter of just taking out uh, a screw here, here, uh, down here and over here, those all come out. This comes off, then it's just, it's, it's much easier at that point to get to this. So just how to, that's how I got to it. And then of course here on the back, uh, let's take a better look at this. <clears throat> Uh, it also has an eight gig stick right here. Uh, so a full 16 gigs of uh, DDR4 running at 2066 in dual channel mode. Also, uh, the thing I really like about this, uh, this is more geared towards a uh, small business and that sort of thing. And uh, this actually has two M.2 uh, SSD slots right there. These are both 2280 slots, uh, if, if, if that matters to you. Um, but basically these are used for uh, for, for SSD caching, so that when you've got a lot of big files uh, that, that uh, you need access to, they will get moved over to here for faster access. Uh, so that's, uh, I, I, I absolutely love this. Of course, here you can see uh, maybe uh, that that is, <clears throat> let's, let's focus, I've got a, 512 gig um, silicon power uh, M.2 drive there uh, that I've had laying around for a while and decided to throw in here for the sake of speeding this thing up even more. So that's that's basically uh, the outside and, and really the inside of it. Um, of course, like I said, uh, these are Seagate uh, 
Barracuda computes. Uh, so they're not ideal for this, but this will probably be a temporary setup. And hopefully, hopefully I can find a sponsor who will send me uh, some drives. Oh, drives, right. So um, <clears throat> this is, like I mentioned, this is only two bay, obviously. You can see that. Uh, this will support up to two 20 terabyte drives in there. So you could, in theory, have 40 terabytes of hard drive space. Now, in order to do that, you would have to run that, um, you know, in, in Stripe mode or was that RAID, RAID 0 or whatever. Uh, I've currently got this set up in RAID 1. So even though I have two 16 or two 8 terabyte drives in there, I've really only got about seven and a quarter terabytes of usable hard drive space uh, after, after RAID and after formatting and all that sort of thing. I'm also running BTRFS on this. Uh, that's what I've actually got over on, on my Synology device over there, have had for more than a year. It's been rock solid. So so I figured I would continue that trend over here and use BTRFS. Um, so now let's take a quick look at uh, the desktop. Okay, so here we are on our dashboard and the reality is I don't like uh, the background here. Uh, and, and when I say that, what I mean is every time you reload this page, uh, it loads a different background and that's cute and whatnot. But again, this is meant to be for small business that is designed more towards small business. So the idea of having cutesy little arts and crafts backgrounds here kind of, in my opinion, takes away from that. Uh, either make it a solid background or even better, uh, let us upload our own background to this uh, so that we can maybe set this up as a more uh, business themed thing. You know, maybe we're working in an office and we wanna have our, our, our office logo back there or maybe I wanna put a wallpaper like, I don't know, uh, that uh, back there or, or something, but this, this cutesy stuff really actually kind of frustrates me. Uh, I don't like it. And well, there you go. That's that's my feeling on the home page. Uh, so let me get logged in here. So here we are on our home page. Again, I'm just I'm going to get some of the nasty stuff out of the way first. Uh, the first thing, obviously, that ho login home page, whatever. Uh, the second thing is over here when this pops up, um, like I love that this says good. It's operating effectively. Great, yay, whatever. Um, but down here under LAN one and MAC address is my internet or, or what it says, internet there. And um, that's my home IP address. There's no reason for that to be there. Also, if, if you wanna put it there, fine, but give us the ability to turn that off. So here is, uh, obviously, like I said, here is the, the control panel, the, the dashboard, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, if I open, let's go to the control panel here and take a look at this. Uh, here we can see, uh, that we've got all kinds of different stuff like users and user groups and shared folders. Of course, we've I've got shared folders uh, set up in here uh, for, for that so that I can access that on the network and upload files to it. Uh, love, obviously, that's, that's the whole point of a NAS, right? Being able to upload files across your network. Uh, I also love this, this uh, remote uh, folder, or sorry, it's remote folder, but not NFS, SMB CIFS. Uh, so basically here we've got, uh, these are uh, remote, shared folders from my Synology device imported into here. Uh, these are just uh, SMB CIFS uh, connected uh, shares here so that uh, so that I can access this kind of stuff locally. In fact, if I open up the file manager, I uh, will turn that off and click confirm. Uh, and if I go to public, uh, here we can see all of my different things here. I've also got a cache and temp transcoding folder over here for MB. Like I said, I've had this up for a while um, and, and it, it, it just, it works. Of course, I can come in here uh, and open this up and see all of the media that I've got on the other device and just manage it all from here. Absolutely love that. Um, of course, we've got uh, storage in here. I've got nothing uploaded, but uh, we obviously can upload storage. Um, so that's, that's that. So let's come back to the home here. Uh, network, um, you can, of course, uh, name your device, whatever you'd like to name it. Of course, like I said, I named mine J and my my other, my uh, F5221, I named that one Silent Bob. So I've got kind of a theme going on there. And of course you can adjust uh, your HTTP access port and your HTTPS access ports. Uh, you can enable uh, server headers in the HTTP response if you wanna do that. Um, you know, we've got file services. Of course, I've got SMB CIFS uh, turned on again for, for Windows network sharing, I've got that. Uh, so of course that's pretty standard. Of course, they've also got AFP, FTP file services, uh, NFS file services, rsync server. So if you wanted to set up an rsync server with this and synchronize uh, files across devices, you could absolutely do that. And of course, they've also got a web dev server there as well. Uh, the terminal and SMP or SNMP. Uh, so I don't ever use SNMP, but what I do like about uh, this SSH option up here is that by default, it is not on port 22. Uh, from a security standpoint, that is brilliant. I love that it is 92.22. I didn't change that. That's just out of the box. 
Uh, so I love that. Uh, and then allow Telnet and SSH access only within the local network. Of course, if you've got, um, you know, like something like guacamole on a Docker container or whatever set up on a different device, you could set that up to connect to this. Even if you are remote, it'll think it's anyway. So you can, you can do that. Of course, there's a discovery service over here for UPnP and Bonjour if you use that. Um, let's see, discovery services, volumes. Let's look at the volume here. Uh, so like I said, I've got this run, running in RAID 1. In fact, if we come over to the storage pool, maybe we'll see. Uh, of course not. Let's go to the hard drives overview. Uh, here we can see I've got two uh, slots and I've got two installed hard drives. Both of those are eight terabytes and I do have an NVMe disk in here. Uh, so we come back over to here and click edit. Uh, here we can see that I do have uh, SSD cache enabled. That little checkbox is there. So that will actually help speed up my system uh, when I'm watching movies and things like that. <clears throat> uh, let's see, there's cancel, there we go. Virtual disks, uh, if you wanted to do that, I suppose you could. I don't have any use for it, so I haven't enabled it. Uh, external storage, this does, like I said, have a couple of USB uh, ports on it, so you could plug in uh, external USB devices and add storage to your system that way if you wanted to, and of course, hot spare. Uh, no drive available there. Uh, so that's that whole that whole storage section there. Uh, region and language, uh, of course, I've got that set to mountain time, that's where I am. I've got it automatically syncing. Uh, so hardware, uh, the fan is working uh, in smart fan mode. Uh, I, I actually haven't tested this. I don't even know if you'll be able to hear it. Um, well, I can't even hear it, so that's cool. Um, but we can also get buzzers. We can adjust how the buzzer does its thing. So you can choose uh, what will cause the system to beat to let you know that there's a problem. Hard drive sleep. Um, I actually have this set to never, uh, partially uh, because when you when you change it, uh, it's like, hey, some models of hard drives may take up to more than a minute. And that's probably true because I've got those Seagate Barracudas in there. Uh, again, they're great drives. They're just not meant for this. So they may be slower to respond. And I just don't want that. So, uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, I'm going to click out. Yeah, I didn't change anything. That's fine. Uh, you can uh, get email alerts when things happen. Uh, and then decide who you want it to go to, and then set up an SMTP server if you wanted to do that. There's a local SMTP server, but I'm pretty sure that uh, most email solutions are going to block or, or throw that to spam. So if you wanna get good, if you wanna make sure you're gonna get your messages, uh, enable the SMTP server there. Of course, security, oh, that's fine. Uh, we've got an SSL certificate that's valid uh, for, for a while anyway. Uh, we can add our own SSL certificates there. Um, let's go back. Yeah, that's fine. Firewall, if you wanted to create firewall rules, there's obviously a way to do that. Account safety, uh, I actually should have that on. Um, and then let's do that and click apply. Great. Uh, uh, denial of service protection. Yeah, I think that's great. Let's enable that as well. And then let's come back. Uh, so that's basically everything in security. And over here, we've got software options. We can see which version I'm on. Uh, for that, uh, I'm pretty sure that I am uh, up to date. Uh, yeah, latest version, awesome. Backup and restore, you can, once you've got this thing set up the way you want it, you can obviously back up your system configuration. And then uh, when, when you do a, a factory reset, re-import your config and you should be up and running faster. Um, and then there is that factory reset option there. Um, so so the, the basic operations of this, very clean, very user-friendly, very uh, just very pleasant to use, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, what, what we want to look at next, in my opinion, is applications, uh, because this thing uh, is a dual or a, a quad core rather with 16 gigs of RAM. You could, in theory, run all kinds of apps on here. Uh, as you can see, I've got MB up and running right here, um, but you could run Docker on this. You could run um, uh, Sync thing, I think is on here. Uh, Box Sync, Backblaze, Backups. Uh, there's Docker. We could just one click install that. Uh, there's, uh, uh, do, do, what else, what else, what else? Uh, there's MB server, of course, fresh RSS. Uh, so, so, so what I love about this is <clears throat> while it won't be as robust as doing a self-hosted thing like Docker or, or whatever, there are so many pre-built apps that are compatible with this, um, that it kind of makes, um, a quick deployment of one of these very, very easy uh, without going through a Docker setup and, and all of that stuff. Uh, so I absolutely love how easy and versatile this is. Uh, of course, they've got other things like DNS server and iTunes server and, um, you know, like Lazy Library. And we've actually talked about that when, when we were talking about Docker, I believe. Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, anyway, you know, we've got... Um, 
uh, Megadisk Sync, Mail Server, Mongo databases, um, Nextcloud, if you wanted to set that up here, uh, there's OneDrive Sync, uh, OpenCart, or if you wanted to do that, you could you could host your own little uh, e-commerce sh e shopping platform on here. Um, there's just lots of really great stuff. Plex, you could install Plex on there if you wanted. Uh, you could you could you could do peer-to-peer -peer, uh, networking that way uh, with that app. Um, you know, there's just a, there's a ton of apps on here, uh, and they're continually adding to this. I actually just saw this the other day that they've got Portainer. I may actually have to give that a look as well. Uh, that would be that would be pretty slick. So this thing's really super robust. Uh, I did some testing the other day and actually had four streams running. Um, not quite as well as I'd want, but I definitely had three streams running with no issues, um, and and I was really really stoked about that. They were all running through MB with hardware encoding enabled. Um, now I will say when I was having those issues, I think uh, that the drives were still uh, syncing for RAID, so that may have been part of the problem. Okay, guys. So just as a as an example here, we've got MB running four separate uh, videos here. Uh, up here at the top left, we've got the Atom Project. Uh, down here, we've got Alita Battle Angel. Uh, over here on the top right, we've got Captain Marvel. And then bottom left, sorry, bottom right, uh, we've got uh, some Bob's Burgers running. Uh, all four of those running flawlessly, uh, no issues whatsoever. And uh, down here at the bottom, uh, here is, uh, here's, here's our current CPU. Uh, usage there, that will change a little bit. It'll bounce up and down. Uh, it sat at a little over 50 for a while, um, but uh, yeah, so that is that is four streams running simultaneously with uh, with the CPU running at just a couple of percent there. Um, but overall, um, the, the, its ability to, to play video very, very efficiently because of the Intel Quick Video Sync is absolutely amazing. Uh, again, I love that you can upgrade the RAM. Like I said, it came with four gigs. I put 16 in. It will support up to 32. Of course, it came with no hard drives, and I threw a couple of eight terabyte Seagate uh, Barracuda uh, drives in there. But uh, like I said, it will also support two 20 terabyte drives that you can put in there and run it in RAID 0 or RAID 1, however you want to do that, whether or not you're looking for uh, lots of storage or 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 you're looking for redundancy. Uh, lots of options with this thing. I absolutely love it. I'm thrilled that they reached out to me and let me uh, have the opportunity to check this out and share it with you guys. If you're interested in picking one of these up, there will be a link in in the description down below where you can do exactly that. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below uh, what you'd like to see me do with this thing. Do you want me to just uh, show you how to install apps and configure things? Uh, do you want to see me put a different operating system on it? That's an option as well. Uh, we could we could put like TrueNAS on it or we could put uh, Open Media Vault on it. There's some different options that we could do there. Let me know in the comment section below what you'd like to see me do with this device in an upcoming video. Uh, also, uh, I want to thank you guys for spending a couple minutes of your day with me today. I really do appreciate it. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and I will talk to you guys in the next video.